Hey, Dental Nachos crew, it's Paul, Dr. Nacho here on a Friday, an unusual Friday still during this uh, weird time on earth with the coronavirus crisis. But one of the things we can do is JFO, just find out about ways we can work on our business to survive and thrive during and after this period of time. And I'm super excited to talk with key resource and sponsor, Colin Receiver, founder of Smartbox Dental. And he's going to share with us some of his tips for surviving and thriving, the tools that we need. Thanks for being on with us, Colin. Share with us what you do and how you help dentists. Awesome. Yeah. Glad to be here and chat with the nachos a little bit. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, yeah. Uh, so we, uh, we help dentists do all kinds of things. But I think, um, you know, one of the big things we put together is merging marketing and management in a way that it is just really makes um, a lot of sense. I mean, there's, there's really three key parts to a practice. The, the practice, the patients, and the people. For sure. And, you know... We, we've all had, maybe you've had this experience or some of your listeners have, um, where you, you've got some drama going on. Maybe yeah. you don't have some A players in the practice. Sounds like you right? know the dental office well. Yes, I, that, that can happen. I have a little amazing, bit about dentistry. I have an amazing team, but sometimes they do an amazing job fighting over paper towels. So, you know, it's, it, that can happen. People are sometimes the biggest challenge, of, but the biggest opportunity that we have in, in sure. any business or any practice. Uh, you know, sometimes there's performance issues. Maybe we need to upgrade, level up some of our players. Uh, we need some more A players. Um, on the other hand, uh, practices that are missing the right kind of patients uh, are going to have issues with holes in their schedule, with, with inactivation churn, with, um, you know, lack of acceptance. Yeah. Generally, eh, most practices we look at, acceptance is pretty good, but it happens. Yeah. Uh, and then there's the other problem where there's uh, the lack of the practice systems, um, sure. you know, and oftentimes that manifests itself. You have profit issues, cash flow issues. Um, sometimes the problems I hear there are, man, if I just had more new patients, yeah. oftentimes, and it can be they actually need more new patients, but oftentimes there's a, a whole uh, wealth of opportunity already in the practice sure. that's right there. And we just got to figure out how to how to extract it. So and those, are, those are great key points to hit on. I mean, I think during this pause, I always have this book near me, uh, you know, the E-Myth Revisited, where it talks about working on, on your business. What are some of the ways or what are some of the tools that Smartbox Dental uses that they can help dentists uh, survive and thrive during this time? I think 2020 is going to be the year that dentists stop working in their business 24-7 and really start working on it. I like that. I, I think this coronavirus thing is as awful as it is, it's a huge opportunity to reset and yeah. really look at how are we doing what we're doing? Um, you know, uh, as much as I hate to say it, I think the glass ceiling on these shutdowns has been broken. Yeah. And, you know, if you go back, uh, a guy named Lee Iacocca ran Chrysler in 1979. And Lee went to the U.S. government in 79, and he said, guys, I need a billion dollars. <laughs> and the U.S. government laughed at him, and he said, okay, here's your choice. I'm going to give you an opportunity of a choice. You can pay me a billion dollars today to save Chrysler, yeah. or you're going to sign a $2 billion check tomorrow when you have to give unemployment to 475,000 people that I lay off. And, gotcha. of course, the rest is history. They wrote the check. Yeah. And now look at how many companies have been bailed out since then. Yeah. These government shutdowns, this stay at home stuff is going to happen. You know, this virus is going to have, we've seen in other countries, some kind of resurgence, localized right. hotspots. And those practices that take the time to optimize and work on their practice yeah. now and get these systems in place are going to be the ones that are set up for success in the 20s. For sure. I mean, uh, even just this, you know, the ability to communicate remotely with patients, your team, to be able to manage things, it's really forced us. You know, we are doing some of this already, but we're doing more. Other dentists, you know, they barely like to turn on their email, but now they're being, you know, brought yeah. into this because this is what we, we need to do to survive and thrive. And you're right, we're going to have scenarios happen again, whether it's the coronavirus or something else that's going to uh, force us into a position that we need to, you know, I had a, a great guy who talks a lot about jujitsu uh, getting off the mat. So, you know, that's where we are. Yep. Yep. Um, yeah, for sure. And, 
you know, I, I think this thing is going to change dentistry the same way that 9-11 changed the world. We're never going back pre-9-11. We're never going back post-COVID-19. Yeah, uh, I agree. You know, how I, I, did a, I did an email a couple weeks ago, and I gave out 10 questions to cool. really look in the mirror and reflect on. Um, how are you looking at your reappointment and cancellation process during closure? How are you looking at your attendance policies and making sure people show up and feel safe? Yeah. You know, little things like in a perfect, we used to trust that everything was sterilized. Right. I don't think people are going to trust that anymore. Yeah. Right? They're going to want to know about something that they probably should have known about for years. And you have to be ready to, you have to be ready to deal with fear. One of the things I've been sharing is that we're very good at answering questions based on fear about stuff we already know about. There was the root canal documentary, no big deal, the dentist, wisdom yeah. teeth extractions, implants. I just think now we all have to be aware, open-minded, that there's going to be new questions coming at us that haven't come in before, and we need to talk with our team to get the messaging right, uh, or else the patients are not going to be confident. And to understand that it's normal for them to feel this way, you know, just like for me, am I going to send my five-year-old to camp this summer? I don't know. Oh, Camp's yeah. going to have yeah. to share with me what is it. I'm, I'm not o overly fearful, but I'm also responsible. And I, I always talk about one word for fear. Another word for fear is responsible concern. I mean, you know, it's a, there's responsible concern. If people overspend in one category of their, their p and it's, it's responsible to be concerned about that. So let's say I'm a practice owner. I say this sounds, I like your message, Colin. How do we work with you? What does the nuts and bolts look like for that? Yeah, so, uh, I mean, the, the nuts and bolts, I think every practice is a little different. Um, if you're a practice owner right now, here's a couple questions I think that uh, we help our doctors with that are immediately uh, relevant right now. What, depending on where you're at in your practice, I know some have taken the PPP money, some have closed down, some are still open, emergencies only, whatever it is. Everybody has an opportunity right now to look at their team yeah. and bringing their team back profitably. Everybody has an opportunity to uh, figure out how they're going to close the gap this year. If you gotcha. look at the numbers, if you can produce, if you've been closed for a couple months and you can produce 15 to 20% more for four to six months, you can close the profit gap in 2020. Yeah, you that's, make that's, roughly the same numbers. You'll right? make Dennis happy if you help them do that. Well, so if that's the goal, let's start at the top. Let's, I think the, the, the instinct is to start at the bottom. What, what tactics, what can we do down here? You know, SEO, pay-per-click, marketing, team training, all that stuff. But let's start at the top. If our goal is to make the same amount of money, what kind of strategies do we need to roll in and, and start to build out this upper layer? Yeah. Well, we need to figure out a patient safety and security strategy. Patients have to show up, right? right. We got to figure out a marketing strategy. Uh, we got to figure out a team safety strategy. We talked about that a little bit before we yeah. went live here. How do we make our staff come right? Um, you know, I talked to a doctor uh, a couple days ago. He put in negative pressure operatories in his office because his team said, we won't come back in until you do it. And after he did it, he realized that all of the negative pressure was dumping into the front office. So now everybody in the office has to wear masks, yeah. not just people in operatories. I, I think great intentions, but sometimes maybe. Not, yeah, not to, and I think it falls under like, don't react too quickly before you learn some of the, some of the oh, yeah. guidelines that we're going to do. Because sometimes I know I, we've been through a lot of things, you know, whether it's an amalgam separator, I mean, New Jersey and other states, it, it causes challenges. So you were talking to me a little bit about this dentist money funnel. Tell me a little more about that. Uh, every dentist needs five dials. You need to be looking at five things in your practice. And uh, those five things, answer, appoint, attend, accept, and average. The five A's. Like that. So let's go uh, get an answer, attend. Answer, appoint. Appoint. Attend. Attend. Accept. Accept. And then average. Okay, gotcha. If you've got a dial on those five things, most practices are going to do really, really well. There's a couple yeah. other things we want to look at. Accounts receivable, but let's, let's stick to what we call the money funnel for this chat here. Uh, what percentage of your calls is your front office answering? 
So yeah. if you want to know how am I going to get 15 to 20% more collections in the next four to six months? Well, if you take a practice that's answering 66% of their calls, which is the national average across the 9,000 or so practices that we've benchmarked. Um, and then there, maybe they're appointing at 60%. Yeah. And then they have 85% show up, right? 100% less no calls and, and cancellation, no call, yeah. no shows. And then generally case acceptance is pretty good. Uh, right. And average patient value, sometimes there can be a little bit of a roller coaster in there. If you can take each of those five A's, right? And you can yeah. move them instead of 65% answer, let's bump it 10%. Let's put a strategy in place to bump that 10% to 75%. If we want to get our patients, more patients appointed, bump it 10%. And if we can bump each of these five stages 10%, we can double the money that we're collecting. Yeah, I mean, it's an, especially answering the phone more is just a big piece of that. And now this whole phone thing has been turned on its head for a little while here. So I think those are great tips. You've shared so much with our audience. If people are listening to this saying, I'd like to reach out and talk to you, Colin, uh, about what the next step is, how can they do that? Yeah, so we've got a whole report put together that breaks down, gives you an evaluation on this money funnel. You can get with your team and plug in your own numbers and figure out what your practice looks like. Dentistmoneyfunnel.com. Dentistmoneyfunnel.com. Uh, you can download the report and, and learn more. Awesome, that's great. And, and, and your uh, main website is smartboxdental.com. And if people want to ask you about how you keep your beard so nice during the quarantine, uh, I'm jealous of that. I shaved mine off. My daughters were afraid of me. It's growing back now. Uh, um, I, I joked uh, with my wife. I lost my razor. I've never had a beard before. I just decided I, if I don't have to go anywhere, I'm going to grow a beard. Yeah, yeah. That's nice. Yeah, yeah. We have to, anything you do. I, I, uh, I, uh, I like to take, uh, use parenting medicine to pass the time a lot of times here in, in, in the, uh, in, during this time. Um, yep. And Colin R. at smartboxdental.com. That's it. Colin R. at smartboxdental.com, smartboxdental.com, and the Dennis Money Funnel. Dot com. Awesome insight. I learned a lot myself here. I love things like the five A's for you to make things simple for, for dentists to think about, to help their team. And I just, you know, one of the messages that I just think you shared so, so well was to anticipate these questions that are going to be coming at us when we get back to dentisting. And I tr I'm totally with you. It's like a post 9-11 world. It changed travel forever. You can't resist it. Let's try to adapt and survive and thrive. So really appreciate you being on with us, Colin. Thanks so much. Hey, thanks. Thanks, Dr. Nacho. Thanks, guys. See you later, Nacho-verse.